Hello everyone, George here, and we're back again with the Ray Tracer Challenge, specifically Chapter 3. In this chapter, it's all about creating the Matrix class. Now, while you could make a generalized Matrix class that could be of any size, I decided because we're specifically working with matrices of size 2, 3, and 4, why not just make separate classes similar to what I would see in a program like Unity? What you see here is me beginning to create each of those classes, specifically creating the default constructors for each one. Now I'm also going to go ahead in and uh, overload the uh, bracket operator so that I can index directly into that matrix without having to do any kind of funny business or accessing the matrix that's inside of it specifically. Now I had a, large... now, I had a lot of trouble with this chapter and uh, while I have had uh, linear algebra classes in the past and I've done quite a lot of matrix manipulation just through 3D programming, it's been a long time since I've actually sat down and tried to calculate the inverse of a matrix, which is what you build up to throughout the entire chapter. And the chapter does an okay job of slowly getting you to that point. But the issue is, I think it kind of abandons you at the very end of it, where you've done a lot of work, you've created all these different forms of the 2x2 two two matrix, and then you get up to kind of the determinant of it, and it really just kind of leaves you hanging with the 3x3 three three and 4x4 four four matrix. And that's one of the reasons why this video took so long was just because I had to get the kind of, you know, self-drive to go online, read stuff, and learn again about how to invert a 4x4 four four matrix, for instance. Which isn't necessarily difficult, it just requires a lot of steps. What you're seeing here is I am creating a matrix constructor test that is going to uh, print out each of the matrices. But to print out a matrix, I of course need to have some way of viewing that text data. And I'm making the two string method here. And I don't do a lot of string manipulation in C Sharp, so I cut out probably about 30 minutes of me researching, going online, and reading about how you can format a, uh, a float value that gets put out. And here you see me kind of playing with that over and over again. I'm gonna do this for a while before I finally come up with something that looks acceptable. In reality, I need to go back in here and kind of count how long the length of the string is and then format all subsequent strings to be a set length uh, in order to make it so that everything lines up perfectly. But I just wasn't having it that day. I really wanted to move on to the real meat of this, which is calculating the inverse of a matrix. When I finally get past this, we're gonna start with the simplest of the matrices, which is the two by two matrix. And the book does give you uh, the direct answer for calculating the determinant and therefore the, uh, what is it, adjugate, and then finally the uh, inverse determinant by multiplying the two of them together to get your inverse matrix. But it does take a little bit of time and things get more and more kind of not explained as you go from three to four by four matrices. And really, that's part of what the book is all about. It is called the Ray Tracer Challenge, not how to make a Ray Tracer. It guides you enough, but you do have to go out there and look things up yourself. Here I'm adding the uh, equality as well as not equals operators so that I can test to see whether or not two matrices are equal. I don't know why I need this. I mean, yes, I mean, generally it's a good idea, but the book hasn't yet explained why I might need it. Also, I'm adding the size variable to each of these matrices and providing a property to be able to easily access it. Of course, the size is important because a lot of these uh, methods that I'm creating and methods in the future are going to rely on some sort of a for loop iterating over all the different uh, elements of the matrix. Here we're doing a test for equality just to make sure that things are either equal or not equal. We create several different matrices and then I'm going to assign some of them values and some of them not and just see whether or not equality works out using that uh, utility class that I created which checks to see whether or not two floating point numbers are the same based upon some epsilon value, which is uh, the difference, you know, like 0 0.001 or something similar to that. Now we're going in, and once you see me implement one operator, it's pretty much the same thing for the matrix three by three and a four by four class. I'll just copy and paste it, or uh, I'll be using some sort of a double for loop, in this case, one that iterates over the rows and columns, implement that, and because the size is a variable inside of each math class, I can rely on that size variable to change with the 2x2, two, 3x3, uh, two 4x4, two, three three, four four, and I really don't have to do any additional programming. Here I'm just going through making sure that matrix multiplication actually works, that we're doing, of course, a row by a column and everything looks fine. And I am following the book for the most part, 
early on in these in these parts of the uh, project. However, as soon as we start getting to calculating cofactors or inverses and so forth, that's where I start to steer away from how the book seems to indicate to do things and just come up with my own implementations. Here we're testing transpose the matrix, which is something that uh, is very important in finding the inverse of one. In fact, towards the end of this video, I screw up and I forget how to, I don't do it, and which is why I don't get the right answer when I try to invert a matrix. So once again, going through here, we now have transpose, and transpose is the same for all matrices, so it's really just a copy and paste of that method for each. Yes, I could take the time to try to create a base mat class and have everyone inherit from it, but it just seems, well, I'm just trying to get it done at this point. I'm not necessarily thinking about the most optimal way or the uh, the most uh, you know, OOP way of doing things. I just want these classes fixed and done. Here I'm also adding things like uh, getting the a sub matrix, which is where you pass in the, uh, the row and column of an element and it returns to you a matrix a size smaller. So if it was a four by four, you get a three by three and it excludes the row and column that you provided in it. This is important for calculating the uh, inverse of the matrix. So it has to be proper. Uh, once again, this thing uses uh, double for loops and uses the size variable. So it's the same function or method for the two, three and four class. Once again, just testing it out, making sure things make sense and that they align with what the book actually says I should be getting for each of these examples. Now I get a little bit lazy and instead of creating multiple unit tests for everything, I just start manipulating the tests and you know changing from a mat two to three to four because some of these methods are really the same thing. In this case, I'm finally in the MAT3 uh, class, and I'm starting to implement the different transpose, submatrix, minors, uh, cofactors, and so forth that the book describes. But I begin to get away from this pretty quick, especially when we jump into the MAT4. Uh, by then, I pretty much just say, eh, screw creating all these separate methods for each of these. I am just going to make matrix inversion because as far as I think the book is going to go, that's all I'm really going to need to do is, is be able to invert the matrix. Now, when you're creating the cofactor matrix, one of the important thing is, is making sure that each term is positive or negative based upon the, uh, the, whether it's even or odd when you add the row and column together. So that's what I'm doing right here is just making sure that works fine. And I'll be reusing that R plus C modulus two is not equal to zero to test to see whether or not the value should be even or odd as we move forward. Around now is where you're going to start seeing me take a huge break in time with uh, what I'm implementing. And that is, if you look at the lower right-hand corner, you can actually see the time and the day stamped there on my Windows uh, clock. And here we are in the large debt test where I'm reading the book and it tells you to implement this 3x3 and this 4x4. And then when I try to do that, I realize, well, I haven't actually implemented the determinant of a 3x3 and I haven't done that for the determinant of a 4x4 yet. So now I'm diving in, calculating the determinant of it. But once again, I am now getting away from the book. Uh, on, the, on one of my other monitors, I'm loading up uh, several different tutorials that explain how to do the inverse of each of these because I just, the, the book really just abandons you at this point. So here I'm back in the MAT2 class and I'm creating the inverse of a MAT2 object. Uh, the determinant of the uh, matrix two is the most important determinant to have because you end up using that subsequently in the MAT3 class and then you use the determinant calculations in the MAT3 to solve for MAT4. So you really do want to construct things from the, the two to the three to the four so that you can rely on the functionality you've created as you move forward. So unlike the MAT3 or the MAT4, the MAT2, I pretty much just hard code how you calculate these different things. Uh, you'll notice there that I didn't have a, apparently scalar multiplication, which is something you need. So I go in there and implement that as well. And then to calculate the inverse, we end up taking our matrix and we multiply it by the reciprocal of the determinant that we calculate. 
Now that we have that information, it's time for us to move forward with everything else. So we're in the MAT2 class, and the last thing I need to do is make sure that if the determinant is equal to zero, that we don't try to solve this. Since we do use the reciprocal of the determinant, if we have a value of zero, it pretty much makes no sense. Your one divided by zero is an, it, you know, infinity, uh, if you want to think about uh, division by zero in that way, and it doesn't make any sense. So we need to check for that and stop us uh, if that happens. Here I'm just testing things out. I'm noticing small errors in what I'm doing and uh, yeah, just uh, seeing what the output is and making sure it matches whatever I see in the book. Ultimately, what I'm trying to get is when I multiply the inverse matrix that I calculate by the original matrix, I should end up with an identity matrix. So that's the way you can always test to see if things are working properly. Now I'm jumping into the MAT3. I'm going through and I'm implementing scalar multiplication. As I mentioned before, I do that for both the MAT3 and the MAT4, and this is just so that I can multiply a matrix by scalar float value, and uh, which ends up being the reciprocal of the determinant. Here I'm implementing the inverse of the MAT3 object. Once again, this is really where I'm not listening to the book at all. Uh, and, and it's not that I'm not listening to it, it's just the book doesn't have much to say. It kind of just lets it up to you to figure out the uh, 3x3 and 4x4 matrix. It does give you uh, some pseudocode to go on, but it looks like the way they implement the matrix in their way is they have one class or one matrix object that can take on various sizes. And uh, the algorithms they, pr they produce can work for any sized uh, matrix, whereas mine are much more specific and straight to either it being a two, a three, or a four matrix. Now we're finally to the point where I'm trying to invert the four matrix, the four by four matrix. And I actually have spent probably about 30 minutes online reading a couple different tutorials and uh, coming up with how this is going to work. And I pretty much am going to use the determinant. The determinant ends up being uh, taking the column or the row values and then multiplying them by the determinant of the sub matrix for each of those particular uh, terms. So if you're on uh, element one, one, it would be one, one times the sub Submatrix that does that excludes the row and columns of one one from the four by four matrix, and then you end up taking the determinant then of the three by three matrix as well. Therefore, you have to have the determinants of your twos and three matrices already put together for any of this to make any sense. Now, I do make a uh, a pretty uh, stupid mistake here with the adju ad adjugate uh, matrix, and that is I don't transpose it, which causes me a little bit of trouble as I move forward. But here I'm going to iterate through every single element of the 4x4 matrix, which is 16 different elements. We get the sub matrix of each individual element, which means I have 16 matrices that I'm actually working with. And I also need to make sure that we're dealing with the cofactor of this. Therefore, the positive and negative signs have to flip as I move from element to element. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try testing my 4x4 inverse matrix, and I notice that it does not work. Uh, how do I know that? Because when I multiply the matrix by its inverse, I do not get the identity matrix, which is uh, all ones on diagonal and then zeros everywhere else, as you can see here. So next up, once I do that, I finally realized that the transpose is not working properly, or that is, I didn't set up the transpose. And once I add the transpose into it, you can see there it is, the inverse matrix, all ones on a diagonal, and everything works just fine.